I have four texts that I'd like to read for you uh, today in preaching this message. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you want to follow along with me, uh, I think it'd be good. But I'm going to read two verses in the book of Proverbs. And then, Lord willing, I want to read two verses in the book of Deuteronomy. And I want to preach to you what the Lord has laid on my heart for this hour. And I believe that this will be a help to somebody. God never gives a message that is not needful somewhere. In Proverbs chapter number 23, Proverbs 23, verse number 10, the Bible says, Remove not the old landmark, and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Then in Proverbs chapter number 22 and verse number 28, the Bible says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. And then we go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 19. Deuteronomy chapter 19 and verse number 14. Deuteronomy 19, 14 says, Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark which uh, they of old time have set in thine inheritance which thou uh, shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Then in Deuteronomy 27 and verse 17, the Bible said, Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and uh, all the people shall say, Amen. Now, our fathers, we look at this very, very important subject today. I pray that you'll help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the four verses I read to you are the only four times in the Bible that the word landmark is found. Now, the word landmark is a land boundary. And in that day, it could have meant a pile of stones or something that marked that land as being a person's or personal property. Now, to remove that landmark was dishonesty. To remove that landmark was illegal. To remove that landmark or to go into the fields of the fatherless was cheating. And so that land boundary marked out that person's inheritance or that person's land. You see, in Israel, the inheritance was not to pass from tribe to tribe. But if it was Dan's, it was Dan's. If it was Judah's, it was Judah's, and so forth and so on. That's the way it went. Now, uh, we know that, that uh, speaking from the context of the Scripture, it is absolutely wrong to cheat your neighbor. It's wrong to remove your neighbor's landmark. It's wrong to remove your neighbor's land boundary so that you might gain something from that. And that's wrong, you understand. Uh, but that landmark uh, 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 identified you as the owner of that land. Uh, you know, we are, we are God's people. And let me say that we are some spiritual landmarks in our lives that, that uh, define us, you see. And the landmarks, the boundaries, now let me say this to you. I don't live for God to try to go to heaven. I don't try to live right to go to heaven. I live for God because I'm going to heaven. You see, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, the, the, this, this landmark identified as, as ownership of that property. Now, now, Canaan in the Bible is a type of victorious Christian living. And what Moses was saying in Deuteronomy, what the proverbial writer was saying is, don't, don't remove the landmark. Don't change the boundaries. All right, and then physically, that's right. You, you'd say, man, a, a man is just a cheat. He's just a, a, a low-down person that would remove a man's landmark. Well, let me say this to you. The same applies for spiritual landmarks in our day, all right? Can I, can I go on the radio and just say this? Now, I, I want to be careful how I say this, and, and I want to say it lovingly, and I want to say it kindly. I, uh, I, I believe we ought to always try to learn things out of the Bible. I, I believe that I, I believe that we ought to always let the Lord teach us things from, from the Scripture. Uh, the psalmist said, Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. But let me say I'm, I'm uh, 55 years old as the time I'm preaching this message. I'm, I've been preaching now for 38 years. I've been, I've been saved for 44. And I am not interested in learning some new doctrine that some preacher has come up with and said, well, we've never seen this before, but here it is. Uh, listen, listen, what has been is now, and what is now is what's going to be in the future. And so I believe that we ought to preach the doctrines we have instead of trying to invent new ones. And, and the boundaries that we have in Christianity, we must not move 
those bad. So I want to take a look at it spiritually today. All right? I believe that all Scripture has a, a contextual uh, 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 truth to it. I believe it has an interpretation, but I also believe that it has an application. The Old Testament is not done away with. The Old Testament is fulfilled. And I believe that what the... I don't think the writer just put this here for the sake of removing somebody's pile of stones. I, I really don't know. It could be. And that's right. But I also believe that there's a deeper spiritual meaning here that we're not to remove the boundaries. Now, what I want to do is I've read four verses to you in the Bible. And I want to take a statement from each of these four verses and preach on those, uh, those four statements. And then I want to also give you some things at the end about the landmarks. Number one, I want you to notice, first of all, in Proverbs 23.10, the first verse we read, Remove not the old landmark. All right? Now, and I want to focus on that word old. Remove not the old landmark. Now, what the proverbial writer is saying, look, your, your fathers set these boundaries years ago. And in the book of Joshua, they set these boundaries, okay? And, and, and they, they remember, they, they mapped out the land. They, they draw it out in books, and they, they cast lots for it. And, and so, so you don't change Judah's land to Dan's land or, or Benjamin's land to Simeon's land. I mean, whoever's land it is, that's whose it is. That's what God said. So don't you think there's a there's deeper spiritual meaning that the boundaries in our lives that, that, that have been set, ladies and gentlemen, that have been laid down by the Bible, by God, and by our forefathers, then those are the boundaries that we ought to take even in this day and hour. Now, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit to you that just because something's old don't ought not necessarily mean that it's better. Now, 90% of the time it does mean that, but sometimes it don't mean that. Okay, for instance, I, I like the Internet. I like phones. I like computers. I like uh, uh, turning on a light and, and, and have it on. For my, my wife even has a, a light in our house programmed. Uh, and, and, and at a certain time, that light comes on. At bedtime, it goes off. Amen. And uh, she said it's just too dark in the house, so she programmed this light. Well, anyway... There's nothing wrong with that. hundred years ago, you couldn't program a lamp, amen, to come on, come up, to turn off. But, but what I'm saying to you is, just because it's old don't mean it's better, but 90% of the time, it probably does mean that, or 85% of the time anyway. I mean, listen, there are some things, and I, I don't understand. I, I, I wish some of you'd help me. And I know that some of you think that Brother Cothran's on the radio being mean. Brother Cothran's hateful. He's just against everybody. He's against everything. He just sets back and thinks up stuff to, to fuss at people about. Well, well, sir, that's not true. But I will tell you, I do not understand why that this generation of preachers are trying their best to get away from the landmarks that their fathers set. I don't understand that. I don't understand why the younger generation of preachers are trying to be so different from the men that were before them. Uh, they paint the men that were before them as being ignorant and not knowing what they're talking about. And, and I, I'm going to say this to you. I am all for education. I'm all for Bible learning. But I believe if Roloff was here, he'd say the same thing. He was a bold preacher. I would rather see you preach ignorantly and have the power of the Holy Ghost upon you. Uh, then, and, and I'm not talking about wrongly dividing the Bible. I'm not talking about doing harm to the Scriptures. Please don't misunderstand. I gave some Bible professors a heart attack there. But I, I put it to you this way. Let me, re, let me rephrase what I'm saying. There are some old men that when I was growing up was preaching, they, they didn't know a lot of things about the Bible that they should have known. But they had the touch of God on them. And our country was better off when men preached for the power of God on them than it is now when we get in the pulpits of America and give a psychology lesson. Now, listen, friend, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, the Bible said, If any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. And I believe there's something to be said for the old ways. All right, he said, remove not the old landmark. Now, I want to talk about that for a minute. Now, the word old in the Bible, <laughs> when you go to the book of Nehemiah chapter 3, you find the old gate. And it's amazing, uh, uh, a scripture reading there in Nehemiah 3, verses 6 through 12. When you read that, how much you find the phrase, now these men are building the wall back. And by the way, you got me in a building that building that wall that 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 that, that are not builders. By you got priests building that wall. A priest wasn't a builder, but they said, "Hey, we want to be involved in the work of God." You got apothecaries' sons. I mean, druggist sons. That's what they were building the wall. Well, that, by the trade, they wasn't a builder. 
Uh, you, you've got you got goldsmith's sons building that wall. Well, well goldsmiths work with very small stones. Uh, by trade, they wasn't a... Uh, they, but you know what? They build the old gate. Now, the phrase from Nehemiah 3, verses 6 through 12, the son of, the son of. In other words, it wasn't the old man that was building the wall. It was the son of. And I'm afraid in this generation that we have went away from God so much that our sons and daughters are going to have to build the old gate again. And I called on you young people, and I, and I know you're listening to me. I know, and by the way, I've got young kids that listen to me. I really, I, I've got a young man, and his daddy told me this. This young man will turn me on at nighttime and listen to me preach uh, 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 until he falls asleep. Now, I count that a great honor. Amen. This young man's a very young man, very young, not even a teenager. And I count that an honor. I thank God that the young generation is listening. I'm nothing, man. I'm, I'm not trying to seek a big reputation. I'm not trying to seek 15 uh, or, or 50 revival meetings a year. I want only what the Holy Ghost wants me to do. That's all. And when you do what the Holy Ghost uh, tells you to do, you, you're, you're doing about all you can do. But, but what I am saying to you is this, friend. I'd like for some of you young people to get under a burden and go out and help build the wall again. In other words, I'd like for some of you young people, I wish God would touch some of you young men and you'd realize the power of the Holy Ghost is more important than higher education and, and, and denying some of the truths of the Bible. I, I wish some of you young men would build the old gate again when it comes to standards and convictions and, and things that our older men had, you know. I mean, we've got all kinds of doctrine, all kinds of things floating around there. But ladies and gentlemen, in the fundamental independent Baptist movement, we have, we've got to stop moving the boundaries. We've got to stop doing that. We, we, you, you say, well, you think only you fundamental independent Baptists are going to heaven. No, I didn't say that. But I, I'll say this to you. We were better off when fundamental independent Baptists were fundamental independent Baptists, and that's what I am, okay? I make no apology. I'm not ashamed of what I am. I'm not ashamed of my heritage. I'm not ashamed. I got saved in the Baptist church. I got baptized in the Baptist church. And I'm, I know I reach people that are not Baptists, and I want to say to you, if you're saved by grace and washed in the blood, I'll see you in heaven. Thank God. I'm glad Jesus got me before the Baptists did. But I, but I do want to say this to you. I'm not ashamed of being a fundamental independent Bible-believing Baptist, King James Bible-believing Baptist. I'm not ashamed of that. I want you to know that I'm never going to be ashamed of that. If they take me off of every radio station that I'm on, I still ain't going to be ashamed of being that. Amen. Now, let me let me help you, okay? Because uh, I found a verse here in the book of Nehemiah that's very interesting. And, and somebody pointed this out, and I thought it was great. Nehemiah chapter 3, verse number 12, tells us about a man. It says this. It said, Shalom, the son of uh, Holish, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem, he and his daughters, not his sons, but this Shalom, he and his daughters were building the old gate. It takes you girls too. I, I wish God would put it in some of you young ladies' hearts to be a preacher's wife. I wish God would put it in your heart that, that maybe you won't have the best of everything in this world. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But you'd just be a good preacher's wife and go wherever you could go. Oh, you say, preacher, I, my daddy's a preacher and I've seen him go through this. Listen, the devil is messing with your mind over that right there. Ladies and gentlemen, our young people need to be... I'm not saying every young lady needs to be a preacher's wife and every young man needs to be a preacher. I'm not saying that. We've got to have carpenters. We've got to have doctors and nurses and lawyers. We've got to have that. But I, I'm, I'm saying to you, friend, that our boundaries have been changed and we need some young people... Listen, we need some young people to get serious about serving the Lord. Uh, you young people, I'm talking 15-year-old. Are you serious about serving God? 20-year-old. Are you serious? Bible college student, are you serious? I want to ask you preachers a pointed question. You, you, you fellas in Bible college, are you looking for a big church and a position? Or are you looking for the will of God? Are you looking to... Uh, one, 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 one college professor said the other day, he, he, said, he said, I taught my students. He said that if, you, if you're trying to dodge uh, uh, stepping on people's toes with the Word of God, and not meaning to, but I mean preaching the Word of God, he said, you need to go get you a job painting houses. Because he said there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of, lot of uh, uh, how do you say it, uh, tender toes out there. Amen. So, so what I'm saying to you is this. I, I don't want to offend you by preaching the Word of God. But when you begin to set boundaries, you offend people. You see, people don't like that. People are living in the in the hour and the day of if it feels good, just just. I mean, if it feels right in your heart, just to, what's in your heart, preacher? Well, that ain't what the Bible said. The Bible said that your heart is desperately wicked, and who can know it? You see, and so God is looking for some men in love, in gentleness, that will say, "Hey, 
we got to stop here. I'll give you an illustration. Ohio has boundaries. Uh, Tennessee is bordered by eight different states. Missouri, Arkansas, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, uh, North Carolina, uh, Virginia, Kentucky, uh, and, and Missouri. I believe I went all around the horn there. There, there, there are eight states. To, now, you know what they have? They have boundaries. I've entered Tennessee from North Carolina. I've entered Tennessee from Georgia. I've entered Tennessee from uh, Alabama. I, I've entered Tennessee from Kentucky. I've entered Tennessee from Virginia. You know how it has a sign there? It says, Welcome to Tennessee. I went to Canada. And uh, believe it or not, Canada has a border. <clears throat> Uh, United States ought to have one. Uh, I, 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 I came back from Canada, and it had a sign, Welcome to America, or whatever was up there. You know why? I had a border. We had a border then when I went to Canada. <laughs> but anyway, I'm talking about borders. Listen, listen, listen. Do you think the Christian life ought to have some bounds? Do you think we ought to have some thou shalt's and thou shalt nots? Do you think we ought to just live the Christian life? Well, what's in your heart? Just do anything's in your heart. No order. No. Listen, if you study your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you're going to find God is a God of order, and you can't get past that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about removing out the old landmark. Now, I'm talking about this man had his daughters out there building the wall. Amen. You ought to read Nehemiah sometime. Amen. Now, let me give you this one. We need some young people. We need some young people that will pray again. We need some young people that will be faithful to church. We need some young people that will learn to tithe and give. We need some young people that will learn standards and convictions about the house of God. We need some young people that will learn that it is not okay to take a vacation and lay out of the house of God while you're on vacation. We need some young people to realize that Sunday is the Lord's day. It's not family day. It's not It's not traveling day. It's not, me and my wife try never to, if we're on a trip, we try to be in church on Sunday. Amen. I mean, listen, we, we need to, we need some young people that to know the boundaries again. Amen. We, they got to know them. Now, Jerome, I, I'm going to read something. I, I know a lot of preachers read this and they preach in hatefulness and I'm not trying to do that today. I want you to understand, Brother Ricky Cothran is not trying to be mean. I'm just preaching the Bible. Jeremiah 6, 16 says this, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the paths and see, and ask for the old paths. I didn't say that God did. Listen, listen. Where is the good way, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. There's a lot in that verse. He said, ask for the old paths. He said, the old paths are the good way. I didn't say that Jesus did. In other words, that means old time singing, old time praying, old time shouting, old time uh, soul winning, old time conviction of the Holy Ghost. God said, that's the good way. I didn't write the Bible, Jesus did. And I tell you again, you must believe the Word of God. You must have something that you draw the boundaries with, and that's the Bible. You don't draw the boundaries with your own convictions. I try not to get my own convictions. I try to live. You say, what are you, preacher? You know, I, I, I'm beginning to not like the word old-fashioned. Many preachers say, we're old-fashioned, fundamentally independent. You go to their church, it's contemporary and crazy and everything else. I am Bible. I try to be King James Bible. I try to live by the Bible. I'm not living right again. I'm not keeping the law to go to heaven. I'm not a legalist, and I'm not a Pharisee. You can call me anything you want to. I'm not. I'm a Bible Christian. But I believe there's got to have some boundaries in the Christian life. Remove not the old landmark. Remove not the old landmark. Now, he said you're going to find rest for your souls. Well, you've never seen a generation that has less rest than do right now. I mean, people take pills to go to sleep. People take pills to get awake. People take pills all during the day. People go to the side characters. People go to the side psychologists. I mean, people just messed up. They have no rest. And I tell you what it is, a lot of people are out of the will of God. But if you get where God wants you, there'll be sweet peace bubbling up in your soul, and you won't need to have have, have all this stuff. Amen. That's right. Now, I'm not I'm not down in all medicine and all that. I'm not crazy. I'm not, I didn't say that. But I'm just saying, amen, I didn't say go throw your medicine away. I didn't say that either. But I'm saying this, when you get where God wants you, there'll be some peace uh, if you pray to the Lord that'll keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, Psalm 119.52 says this, I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have uh, comforted myself. He said, I remember the judgments you've laid down in the Bible from old. All right, listen. Are the old judgments still right? Do I need to be looking for a new doctrine? Well, if a man comes out with a new doctrine today, and I follow that doctrine, what's going to stop a fellow from coming out with a new doctrine tomorrow? And I'm not even going to argue the point, because I don't argue and debate on the radio, but I hear this uh, sometimes out of, out of 
carnally minded people and, and, and you can't be real spiritual minded to make this statement. But I hear this now, preacher, times have changed. Well, I agree with that, but God hasn't. I agree that times have changed, but the Bible hasn't. I agree that the Supreme Court has changed uh, on, on, on some things that it's made rules on, but this Bible hasn't. By the way, the Supreme Court don't make the laws God does. Now, I, I would obey the laws as Christians as much as we can, but I'm going to take the Bible over any court in the land. Amen. I'm going to take the Bible over any uh, any so-called professor or any, any so-called preacher. I'm going to take the Bible. I'm just not going to get carried away with these other doctrines. I'm not interested in taking revelation and finding some new doctrine that nobody's ever found. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in helping a generation walk with God and a generation of young people, a generation of older people, a generation of discouraged preachers. I'm interested in you, to help you, to love you, and to help you realize we need to stay with the boundaries. We need to stay with what works in our homes. You, you know why homes get in trouble? You let those old boundaries down. Oh, I've been told all my life this, but I just, you let down one time. You talk to that other lady that ain't your wife one time, and then you're in sin. But I'm saying to you, we need so much. The one time you let down, you change the boundary one time, and the devil's going to get in your home. You change the boundary with your children one time. And you let down on standards that you've held all your life and the devil will get your children. You, you, you change one boundary in your church and I'm telling you the world's going to come in and you've got a cr- crowd of carnally minded people in every church and they're sitting there wanting to change the boundaries. I, I was in a church. I'm not going to say where it is. I preach in a lot of places. and I'm, I, I'm, But I, I was in one church and, and I heard the, the men talking in this church. And they've got a godly pastor. But I, I, I heard these men talking. And they said, well, this is what we need in this church. And, and and that pastor hasn't seen fit to implement that in that church. And I sat there and listened to that. I never said a word, but I thought, if you men to go down that route, you'll ruin this church. And I didn't say anything, but I'm saying to you, what's wrong with sticking with the boundaries that we have? Amen. Now, Psalm 143. Let's look at Psalm 143 and verse number 5. By the way, by the way, let me go back to Psalm 119.52. The, the psalmist said he got comfort out of the old judgments of God. By the way, you, you say, well, that old stuff don't work. People are a whole lot more comforted when we went with the old ways. Amen. I'm talking about remove not the old landmark. Now, Psalm 143, 5 says, I remember the days of old. Now, I'm going to say something about that in just a minute. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. Now, let me stop right there and say this. I don't think we ought to live in the past. And I think some of us are doing it. And probably the preacher that's preaching to you is guilty of it a little bit. I don't think we ought to just keep saying, well, what was in this man's day and that man's day? Now, we got to say that as a reference. But you can't live in the past. No, sir, things ain't where they used to be. But God put you here for this day. God put me here for this day. This is this is not some preacher's day that's gone, but this is my day and your day. And God's put us here for this day. Now, wait a minute. That having been said, the psalmist said, I remember the days of old. It does not hurt to remember where we came from. It does not hurt to remember our heritage. It does not hurt to remember where our fathers were. And brother, I think we'll have the same boundaries they had a hundred years ago in, in, in fundamentalism 50 years ago. We ought to have the same. And I tell you, I've been preaching 38 years. And I've got to tell you that things have really changed in 38 years. But, I, but I've, got, I've got to keep trying to help the generation of my day. Now, number two, I, I want to notice another statement that was made in another verse. Uh, in, in Proverbs 28, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 22, 28, he says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Now, I want you to notice that statement. Now, we looked at the old landmark. I want you to notice the landmark that our fathers have set. Now, now, in other words, the 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 Canaanite, the uh, the Israelites conquered the Canaan land, and they went in and they set these landmarks. They set up the boundaries for Judah, for Dan, for Benjamin, for Simeon, for uh, this one and that one, all the tribes, Ephraim, and and all. The, and, and so that was their tribe. That was their inheritance. That's where they should be. They set that land boundary, and it was wrong to move that land boundary. It was dishonest. It was illegal. And by the way, when you when you move up, when you move the spiritual boundaries, it's dishonest. It's cheating your children. It's cheating your country. And also it's illegal with the Bible. There are some things that are just wrong with the Bible. Now I say that. I know I run the risk of making people mad. But there are things that you should not do as a Christian. It's in the Bible. You young people. I don't care how much times change. There are things in the Bible you should not do. 
There are things in the Bible you should do. You need to find out what you should do and what you shouldn't do, and that comes from reading and studying your Word of God. Now, let me go on here. Let, let me show you something about this. Amen? Now, Proverbs 22, 28, he talks about uh, removing the, the landmark that our fathers have set. Now, I want to give you something. It, it's interesting. I look this little word set up, and, and it's amazing what this little word set means. The, the, the landmark that our fathers have set. It's amazing what this word means. First of all, it means accomplish. Do you think our forefathers accomplished anything? You know what? God used them to build great churches. God used them to build Christian schools. God used them to build great institutions. And they have been handed off to a generation of compromising liberals today, and we're in a big mess. But it's not our forefathers' fault. They accomplished something. Now, did you know also the word means advance? Our forefathers advanced the work of God. They were not interested in advancing a position or a name for themselves or a title for themselves. They were interested in advancing Jesus Christ. And that's what I meant. So I'm not interested in a big name and a big title. I'm interested in advancing the cause of Jesus Christ. And if your ministry is not advancing the cause of Jesus Christ, then you need to check up on what your ministry is doing. Amen. Well, the word don't only mean advance. But the word means this. It, it means to accomplish. It means to advance. It means to appoint. Our forefathers appointed some things. And they said, right, here's the boundary. It means to bear. Would you say our forefathers bore some burdens? I'd say they did. Our forefathers didn't start out with the electronics we have today. Our forefathers didn't have the nicest buildings we have today. Uh, I, I mean, listen, some of our churches started out, and they didn't have what we have today. They were hewn out of swamps and, and, and woods. And, I mean, men labored and worked and, 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 and told. Uh, 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 a man was telling me the other day, one of the churches in our area how it got built and, and how the money came in for it and, and, and how a man at the sawmill said, uh, you bring the, the, the timber down here and I'll saw it for the church. And, I mean, boy, back in that day, people gave and they, and they bore burdens. Amen. That's the landmarks our fathers set. They bear. Uh, it means to bring forth. It means to put in execution. I mean, our forefathers put in. So, and then, then this is an interesting word, this word. Uh, the, remove not the ancient landmark which our, fa- which our, which our fathers have set. No, I'm not quoting the word for it. Our fathers set the landmark. Now, th- this is an interesting word, this word set. You know what it literally means here? Fighting men. Now, I don't think us preachers ought to go out and pick fights. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You are in a fight if you're a fundamental Bible-believing preacher. And I'll tell you who you're in a fight with. You're in a fight with the devil. You're in a fight with his demons. You're in a fight with principal. And you, you, you can call me weird, call me anything you want to. But the biggest fight I have is with the devil and his demons. I have that fight. I tell you, when I go to pray, I fight devils and demons. When I preach, I fight the devil. I, and, 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 and I fight my flesh. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a warfare out there, and it, it, has, it has ramped up so much in the past year or two, it ain't even like it was 10, 15 years ago. I said 10 years ago persecution was coming on the church. I had no idea it'd be like it is right now. I had no idea we'd be living in a discouraged hour like we are. But listen, let's, even in our discouraged day, this is not the time to remove the boundaries. Some folks said, well, if I just let down and I bring singing into my church, I'll just get them in with singing. Well, now listen. You better stick with what works, and that's the preaching of the Word of God. Uh, some folk have tried every gimmick and every trick in the world. By the way, you can't build a church. God's got to build that church. If God don't blow His breath upon that that you're doing, you will spin your wheels in vain. John 15 said, Without me, ye can do nothing. I tell you, when we do it outside the power of the Holy Ghost, we do it without outside prayer, and we do it outside God, it'll come to naught, friend. It'll come to naught. A lot of these, a lot of these contemporary movement stuff, it's going to come to naught anyway because it's built on the sand. It's not built on the rock. And the floods are going to come, and the rains are going to descend, and it's going to be gone. So it really don't bother me in the sense, of it, it, other than it's really taken out a lot of our young people and things of that nature. But these old men were fighting men. Do you realize some of these men fit the fight? You, you, you think about men like, I believe his name, I don't want to get it right, the man that wrote Pilgrim's Progress. What was his name? John Bunyan. Do you think he fought a, a fight not taking a, a, a license from the nation of England, I believe it was, and he told the guard, he said, guard, you have that sword, and if I stick my hand out there, they laid the license out there and slid it under the jail cell and told him if he'd grab that license, he could go free. And he told that guard, he said, if I reach for that license, you take that sword and cut my hand off. 
I mean, brother, that was a type of men that we had. I mean, we used to have some forefathers that stood there. We had used to have churches when beer and liquor came into the community. They would, they would, they would, they would say, "Hey." We're not going to shop at these stores. We're not going to eat at these restaurants. Oh, you say now, well, preacher, you just can't find anywhere to eat without beer. Is it you can't find anywhere to eat? And I'm not saying, amen, that everybody eats somewhere where they... I'm not saying But I'm just saying this. A lot of times we, we can do things if we really want to do things. I'm just, I'm just, I'm drawing... I'm trying to make you understand that years ago people stood and they, they sacrificed. I, I'm afraid... That our people today are so weak in the churches, we're not willing to, and I don't even know Ricky Cothran's standing, but I'm afraid we're all so weak that if persecution really comes to us, I wonder how we will be standing. I mean, we, we can't sacrifice anything. I mean, we can't stand against anything because we got to have it. We got to have the food. We got to have the sports. We got to have this. We got to have that. We have got to have it. We are a society that is addicted but we're addicted on the wrong things. Now, I hope you understand that. But I, God help us to have some young men that will fight for the King James Bible. You so say, oh, that book don't need defending. Well, I'm going to say this to you. I, I believe we ought to defend. I believe we ought to be defenders of the Bible. I believe we ought to be defenders of the right kind of music and the right kind of things in the church. I believe we ought to defend this. Oh, you say, preacher, I don't ever say anything about that in my church. Well, you won't go many years if you don't preach in your church. People won't know the truth. Amen. Now let me help you. That, that, that this word set. Don't remove the landmark your, the fathers have said. It means to appoint, to advance, to accomplish, to bear, to bring forth, to put in execution, fighting men. It means to finish. Our forefathers finish. It means to labor. Some of our forefathers wrote commentaries. Who's writing verse by verse commentaries today? Who's writing good, and there are some, the men, but who's writing good books that will help us today? Who's writing under the influence and the power of the Holy Ghost? I mean, listen, let's don't move the boundaries, folk. We, we've raised a lazy, lazy society of preachers. Our, our preachers think more about fellowship than they do falling on their knees. Our preachers, and I know when I say this, it sounds blunt, it sounds mean, and then preachers don't want to, you know, they, 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 they say, well, you're just, you're just taking a shot at us. But I, I want to tell you something. We're not going to have revival in America. Until some of our men of God get a fire burned in your heart. You're not going to have revival in America. You're not going to have it until we get a burning in our heart. Until we are willing to bear burdens. Until we are willing to labor in the work of God. Until we are willing to do things no matter what it costs us. You know the men that signed our Declaration of Independence. Did you know that many of them lost their homes and livelihoods and many of them were homeless? Oh, but let me tell you something. God has rewarded this nation for what they did. Well, this word means to maintain. There's some things you need to maintain. This word means to observe. There's some things you need to observe. This, this, uh, this word means to practice. Amen. This word means to sacrifice. It means to serve. Our old men sacrificed. They served. Our forefathers set the landmarks. And now we've got the liberal colleges and the liberal Bibles and the liberal thinking of our young people that we're going to learn something better. And our, all of our old people were just a bunch of dumb people that didn't know what they were doing. I'm going to disagree with that. My friend, I could name you two preachers when I was growing up, and they never had a doctor's degree. One of them might have had an honorary one, but they never, they never went to Bible college. They worked for a living, but these old men would get in the pulpit, and they preach with the power of the Holy Ghost of God on them. And I tell you, that's what we need again. I, listen, I'm not against college and all that, but I'd rather see you preach with the power of God on your life than anything I know. And by the way, you're not going to get that unless you abide in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the power of the Almighty, uh, 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 under the shadow of the Almighty, rather. And I, I want to give you something. Second Peter chapter 1 says this, verse number 20, knowing this, uh, first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Watch this, verse number 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. One one uh, Greek uh, a writer said that 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 moving there that these men it was like a sailboat on the ocean it, it, it didn't move until the wind moved it. The Holy Ghost moved these men, and they were men of old. Listen, men of old wrote this Bible. Why would we try to change the Bible now? Well, preacher, we're living in a different generation. I want to ask you a question. You believe that God's over all the earth, right? You believe that God can do anything He wants to. Uh, I'm not sure that God, uh, uh, God, God, uh, you know, in other words, uh, th there's some things that God, uh, God don't look on sin. We know that. 
But we know that God is over all the earth. We know that. So if you think God's over all the earth, do you not think that God could have kept up with the times in His Bible? Did you say, well, 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 times have changed. Wait a minute. Are you saying that the days that we're living in now are catching God by surprise? Are you saying that God's called a conference up in heaven and He said, well, wait a minute, you know, we should have put this in the Bible. We should have made it more uh, friendly for uh, this generation, that generation, because their definitions of words have changed. And so we've got to have a better Bible. So let's drop one out about every two or three years from heaven. That is ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, God gave you the Bible through the ages. God wants you to go by the same Bible your forefathers did when they founded this nation. Amen. That's exactly right. Now, number three, I want to make the third statement from the verse in Deuteronomy. Uh, he said, Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark. All right, let me just read the verse, Deuteronomy nineteen fourteen. The Bible said, Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark. Uh, he said this, He said, Which they of old time have set uh, in thine inheritance which thou shalt inherit in the land, that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Now he said this, he said, don't remove your neighbor's landmark. Now now your neighbor is somebody that lives beside you. Your neighbor is somebody you trust. Don't remove his landmark. When he's not looking, don't you go out there and move his pile of stones and take more land than you're supposed to. Can I say this? Can I say that we have allowed the contemporary movement and the devil to move our landmarks? We've allowed them to change our Bibles, change our music, change our churches, change us from fundamental independent Baptists. We've allowed the devil to do all this. And we've just sat back, by the way, did you know it's cheating to move your neighbor's landmark? It's dishonest. It's not right before God. Did you know that there's going to be some people stand before God for changing? You see, I, I, I met a person not too many years ago, and they said to me, well, preacher, uh, or they didn't even call me preacher. They said, they said, uh, oh, well, what's to say your, your way might be right or my way might be right? Or You know, it's talking about this contemporary movement. I, I'm going to say this to you. The Bible's still the Bible. God's still God. Nothing has changed in heaven. Things may change on earth, but I'm talking about removing the old landmark. It's dishonest. It's cheating. To, so when you move boundaries in your church and you and you lack up, you know who you're cheating? Your people. I, you've never seen the day when people want to do more for youth than they do in this day time. It's just youth, 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 youth. And I, by the way, by the way, you young people, I'm for you. You'll never have a better friend than Ricky Cawthorn. I mean that. I love you. I had, a, I had a young boy wrote me a letter and said the Lord called him to preach. I mean a young, just starting to be a teenager a few years ago. I, 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 I want you to understand that I'm for you young people. But I'll tell you young people don't need a different kind of music. You don't need a different kind of church. You don't need a different kind of dress. You don't need a different kind of talk. We should keep the balance. How are you going to learn what's right if you don't learn it from us? I'm going to make no apology for happy. I mean, preachers are teaching these young men all kinds of crazy philosophies in this day and hour. Today, it is all about marketing yourself. Today, it's all about positioning yourself. Today, it's all about being in the right place at the right time. If I can just get the right breaks. And one of them old great preachers said, I heard him say this the other day. He was back in the 40s. He said, you don't need the right breaks you just need God on your ministry. Oh, you say, preacher, you'll just be a cornfield preacher if you do that. Nobody won't listen to you. Well, the Lord's blessed, blessed me to preach to a lot of people. And God sits an old cornfield preacher. And I don't glory in ignorance. I think a man ought to study his Bible. But I tell you, I'm not going to change my boundaries. You say, preacher, you sure could bring a lot of money into the ministry if you just change your boundaries. I could bring a lot of sorrow and hurt to this ministry too, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay where it is. Amen. Proverbs chapter number uh, 23, verse number 10 says, in the latter part of that verse says, remove not the old landmark. And then it says this, and enter not into the fields, or, and enter not into the, the fields of the fathers. You know what they were doing there? The man of the family would die. And, the, and, and, and so the children would inherit the land and they would remove, they would, they would go in there and they would remove the landmark and take away their land un unsuspecting because the kids didn't know where the boundaries were. You young people at a young age, you need to know where the boundaries are. You need to know what the Bible says about tithing. It's not what your pastor says or your youth pastor. Or, by the way, I'm not saying disrespect them, but I'm saying if you're in a church, a contemporary outfit, and they're teaching you against the Bible, that's, that, then that's when, you need to, that's when you need to do something different. You see what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, not, it's what the Bible, in other words, the Bible's your authority. Now, if you've got a good pastor, you listen to him. You've got a good youth pastor, you listen to him. But if you've got a contemporary outfit, it's not what they say, it's what the Bible says. This Bible's right about tithing.
This Bible's right about dressing. This Bible's right about marrying the right person. This Bible is right about an immoral relationship before you get married. This Bible is right about being faithful to the house of God every service. Uh, This Bible is right about loving your neighbor. This Bible is right about not cheating on your job. This Bible is right about honesty. This Bible is right about humbleness. This Bible is right, my friend, about preaching. This Bible is right about church. You cannot improve on the Bible. And yet, people have changed the landmarks. And you'd be surprised in our fundamental independent churches how these non-versions of the Bible are creeping in now. By the way, you say, well, preacher, I, I listen on the radio to a man. He don't altogether use the King James, and, but I listen to him because I get some good stuff from him. I, I, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm not being ugly. I'm not being mean. I just want to ask you a question. Is it worth going to a septic tank to get a biscuit? And that's all I'm going to ask you. I'm going to stay with the Bible. I'm going to stay with the men that preach the Bible. There's enough preaching out there, men that preach King James. I'm going to stay with them. I don't have to go to these other fellows. You say, preacher, you'll never be deep. Well, you, sometimes you're drowned in deep waters. Amen. Now, let, let me go on. Uh, re- removing the lamp. So now I'm going to give you the fourth one. The fourth one is found in the last verse I read in Deuteronomy chapter number 27 and verse number 17. The Bible said, Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. The Bible said, and all the people shall say, Amen. When Moses was giving out these curses, he cursed the man that removed his neighbor's landmark. Now, God don't deal in curses today. He deals in chastening in the New Testament. But I'm going to say this to you. I believe that God will absolutely put a... a, I, I, I believe that He will put chastening on a man that changes the landmarks. I I believe the contemporary landmarks that have been changed by some of these men, and I believe some of them are lost, that have have changed the boundaries, and I believe you're going to answer to God. You're going to face God for overthrowing people's faith. What is that Jesus said to the Pharisees? He said, you don't go in, you suffer them them that would go in, that you suffer them not to go in. I mean, did you know you can hinder people from going to heaven? And you that have changed the preaching of Jesus Christ, you've caused a generation not to go to heaven. You that have changed the Bible, you've caused a generation not to go to heaven. Amen. And so listen, friend, we need the Word of God. We need to to let the lamp down. Now, we wonder what's wrong with our nation. Now, listen. Our nation didn't get in trouble because of political parties. Our nation's always been corrupt in political parties. I mean, if you go back to the 1800s, and I've been studying 1800s history, I mean, there was cheating, there was confusion. Study the election of 1876. I mean, listen, we've had that in our country from the beginning of time, but I'll tell you what has changed. It ain't a man in a movement. I'll tell you what's changed is the morality of our God's people. The morality of God's people, the fear of God in God's people, the house of God. They don't even fear the house of God anymore. Now, when I preach this, I'm almost alone. And people say, well, you know, you, you'd do better if you wouldn't preach it. I, I think I do better when I do preach it. Because I'll get letters or phone calls from somebody that will say, Brother Cothran, thank you. I'm not trying to make a big reputation. Hey, folk, I'm trying to save America. And what's going to save America is us getting right with God. Us getting a revival. Us get, young people, you getting right with God. Getting those immoral relationships. Getting those dirty pictures off your phone. I mean, getting that sin out of your life. You're rebellious against mom and daddy. Get those things you've hid in your bedroom that they don't know is there. Get that junk out. That's where you start getting. You let a bunch of young people get right and it'll start revival. You older people get right. Amen. Now, amen. I, I, I believe man's under a curse. Amen. That will remove another man's landmark. I believe that. Amen. I really do. Now, I want to give you... I I I I want to I want to give you this, Amen. By the way, that word curse in the in the Hebrew means a bitter curse. I believe a man lives a bitter life that changes the landmarks. Nobody that's in these crazy movements are really happy. Did you know that? Now I'm going to leave you with some landmarks that we shouldn't change spiritually. Again, I know the context of the Scripture is talking about the neighbor's landmark. And by the way, physically, don't you move your neighbor's landmark? Don't you cheat him out of one inch of land? But I believe there's a more spiritual application. Number one, I'm going to give you these. I believe the landmark of the Scriptures have to be defended. I, I tell you again, it's the King James Bible. They translate it into English. It is not these other versions. And since these other versions have come on the scene in the last 50 years, they have wrecked this country. They have produced a lifestyle of we go to church on Sunday, but we live the same way on Monday. God said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You say, Preacher, you ought to just stick to the New Testament. Well, I, I beg to differ with you, but if I did just stick to the New Testament, uh, Paul said that we're, that, uh, that, uh, that what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall he that is dead to sin live any longer therein? So if you want to get there, Paul's tough as the law is. 
I mean, if you're saved by grace, how in the world are you going to change the Bible? Uh, you fundamentalist, I'm going to ask you a question. Why would you share verses on social media that's not King James? Why would you share thoughts? Oh, but it's a better understanding. Then you're yoking up with them. You're changing the Bible. You know, you know the King James Bible really ain't hard to understand. Let me give you a quick interpretation of a verse in the Bible. Let's just take Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Can we take that? All right, let's just take that. In the beginning, that, that, means, that means something started somewhere. That means that a man had a beginning, but God didn't. That's in the beginning. All right, God. All right, God, that's a person up there. He's not man, but he's God. He's higher than we are. In the beginning, God created. That means he made something, right? Heaven and earth, he, he made it. All right, heaven and earth. In the beginning, God created what? The heaven and the earth. The heaven's up yonder. The earth's down here. Is that a good interpretation of that verse? Preacher, that's cheap and childish. It's a good interpretation though, right? The Bible's really not hard. Jesus wept. That means he cried. He wept. He wept aloud. Amen. For whosoever, that means anybody, shall call. That means that means pray on the name of the Lord. That's that's God up yonder. Amen. Uh, shall what? Shall positively shall be saved. Amen. You won't go to hell, but you go to heaven. That's a good interpretation, right? I'm not making fun. I'm just telling you that we get in these, these settings where we want to go deeper in the Bible. And by the way, I've got nothing wrong with going deeper in the Bible. I've got nothing wrong with learning Bible truths. But we went so deep that we've left the elementary. We've left the, the, the basis of the thing. We've got to get back to the Scriptures in our church. If you see your Sunday school start slipping, stop it. If you see uh, 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 things in your church start trending toward other Bibles, we need to put a stop to it. Stay with the King James Bible. Number two. Salvation. I really believe this. I, I, I do not believe in people just praying a prayer and repeating it after somebody. Now, if that offends you, I'm sorry. But I believe that people ought to be convicted by the Holy Ghost of God. Now, listen, it's very easy to get saved. I'm not making it hard. Uh, I, I don't believe you'll ever pray to God. God won't save you. God, if you're serious in your heart, God will save you. Now, if you're holding back something, God won't. But I believe we've got to have the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. You know what I've been praying? Now, we, we, we criticize how bad our country is, right? And we put things out there, some people do on social media, about how bad this one is and how bad that one is. Let me tell you what I started doing. You won't see any of that on my social media page because I don't do it. But let me tell you what I started doing. I started praying conviction on people that I know is not saved. You say, preacher, we got a crowd of heathens running the country. Well, then pray for Holy Ghost conviction on them. Do you don't want to see them go to hell, do you? Don't you want to see God save them? Don't you want to see God do something? If you'd start praying for conviction one time a week, the same time every week, you'd meet with God in revival. We'd have revival in six months. If the Holy Ghost, when they had that vi uh, revival on the island of Lewis... In the 1940s, they said that men were falling down by the sides of the road, begging God forgiveness under Holy Ghost conviction. Wouldn't you like to see that in America? Wouldn't you like to see men on the road to Chicago fall down and beg God to save them? Los Angeles, St. Louis, Nashville, uh, Greenville, Charlotte, Winston, Salem. I mean, wouldn't you like to see the convicting power of God so strong that men just fall down and beg God to forgive them? And can, I, I wish God would convict you so strong right now listening with the radio that you know you're a fake deacon you know you're a fake view we got some fake preachers who've never been saved oh but do you know who i am yes sir you're a lost sinner on your way to hell unless you get saved i know who you are amen and god knows who you are if you've called on the name of the lord you're saved but if you're not going to church won't make you saved going to bible college won't make you saved i mean friend, i'm not against it i'm just simply telling you that listen hey 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 don't remove the old landmark we've got to keep the old landmark of salvation being saved by grace not of works all your TV movies and all that mess. Do you know what they do? They promote works. They promote baptism. And we sit there and watch that in our homes. And uh, I was watching something one day, and it and it's it's just a little uh, a, a film that everybody watches. It's got no cussing, no vile language. It was a family a film. But you know what? They come down. They had the little preacher there at the church. And you know what he was promoting? Baptizing. And that bothered me. I'm going to tell you that bothered me. It is not baptism that's going to get you to heaven, friend. It's the grace of Jesus Christ. We better start teaching the truth about salvation. We've changed the boundaries about salvation. We take them in. Well, let's just join the money people. I get so tired of hearing that. Let me tell you something. I don't cater to money people. If you want, if you want to help this ministry, fine. If you don't, you know, that's between you and God. But I'm going to tell you the truth whether you got a million dollars or one dollar. Because if you got a million dollars, I still don't want to see you go to hell. I don't want to take your money. I'm not after your money. I want to see you go to heaven with me. Well, another landmark, I believe, is, is, is one that Christians don't talk about much. And one that Brother Ricky gets in trouble quite often for talking about is separation. 
There used to be a day when men looked like men and women looked like women. I'm talking about dressing. I, there used to be a day when preachers looked like men. They didn't look like a bunch of rebellious people. They looked like, by the way, they wore their preaching uniform to the pulpit. Amen. There used to be a time when we didn't look like the contemporary crowd. When we stood for what was right. And, and brother, listen, there used to be a time we were separated. We didn't buy and sell and hunt and fish on the Lord's Day. We're never going to have revival in America. We will never have revival in America unless some of us get back to realizing how we have desecrated God's day. Brother, I, I tell you again, I don't want to make you mad, but Sunday's not family day. Sunday's not traveling day. Sunday's not the time for you to sit at home and be with your family. Sunday's the Lord's day. And it's today where you ought to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I mean, sir, you ought to go to church on that day and rest on that day and get full of God and get refreshed on that day. I plan nothing on Sunday morning but church. I plan nothing on Sunday night but church. I plan nothing on Wednesday night but church. That way nothing can't get in the way. Please don't get mad at me. I've been preaching the same thing for years. I'm preaching the Bible. Number four, I want to say this, the landmark of singing, shouting, and praising God. I was reading my Bible this morning. In Leviticus chapter number 9, the glory appeared to Israel, and the fire fell and consumed the burnt offering on the, on the altar. But in chapter 10, something, something happened that should never have happened. The fire of God came down in chapter 9, but Abihu and, uh, and, uh, 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 and his brother, uh, Aaron's sons, amen, the devil just took the name out of my mind, but, uh, but Abihu and Nadab, Nadab and Abihu, and they offered strange fire. And brother, we sure have got some strange stuff that says it's worshiping God today. It's almost blasphemy. This rock music is blasphemy, this rock gospel. It's, it's blasphemy in the name of God. Oh, preacher, we go to a church and we, 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 we have the rock gospel and we have the drums. You're borderlining on blasphemy. My friend, listen, you've moved the boundaries. Listen, give me amazing grace or you're washed in the blood. There's a fountain filled with blood. Blessed assurance at Calvary. Love lifted me. Uh, 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 I, I mean, I mean I, I'll sing to the Almighty. Give me these hymns. Give me good old hymns and songs from the songbook. Brother, that's what will win America back to God. That, that's it. You think God didn't use Fanny Crosby in the 1800s to write songs? Listen, this, this praise and worship is not found together. That phrase is not found together in the Bible. Let me give you one other one. I, I believe what never moved the boundaries concerning the secret place. Ladies and gentlemen, we're promoting everything today but prayer. Some folk promote study, 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 study all the time. Study is good. But to a preacher, it's not study, 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 study all the time. It's study and pray, study and pray, study and pray, study and pray. You've got to have a balance. You need to pray as much as you study, study as much as you pray. But you need to pray and study, pray and study, pray and study. The Bible said in Luke, said when they would come to the place, amen, in other words, it was customary for Jesus to meet his disciples and pray. All right, you can remove the landmarks, but I'll tell you what's going to happen. Open church in America, as you know, it's going to be done away with. And the true worshipers are going to be worshiping in secret. Persecution is coming on the church. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure that it shouldn't. Now, I know that that bothers some of you. But listen, I, I want to tell you something. We've got our fine churches. We've got our, every, every, we've got our fine ministries. We've got everything running just right. But I'll tell you what we ain't got. We ain't got, got and nobody's heeding the warning. It seems like we're just preaching and, and water's pouring over the duck's back. I wonder how many of you will listen to this message and you'll go get right with God. And you'll say, Preacher, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to quit playing around. It's time for me to get right with God. I see the seriousness of life right now. At 55 years old, I see that I need to be on guard and need to be more effective for Jesus than I've ever been. I want to say something at the end of this message. A lot of times the end of it don't get on the radio, but I'm going to say it anyway. So if you get it as a whole message, you'll understand. I'm not trying to be mean to any church, any pastor, any preacher. I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. I want you to understand, you say, preacher, you preach the way you do. I preach the way I do because I love you. I could compromise and be, be booked up with meetings and have a bunch of money. I'm not, I'm not preaching against that. There are some good men that they preach meetings every week of the year, and it doesn't mean they've compromised it. It means that God's using them. I, I, I'm not going to be, I, my life, I, I don't want to be jealous because they're getting the meetings and all this. But I want to say this to you. I just can't change. We've got to stay with the old landmark. We've got to stay with it. We can't move the boundaries. Because if we do, we're not going to know what's right and what's wrong. This Bible is your boundary book. This Bible is your landmark. Stay with it. If you're not saved, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, help us today. And Lord, a message like this, I realize that some would say, Oh, Brother Cothern's being mean. But Lord God, I, I love you. 
and, and I want to help this generation. Lord, help some people to get right today. And God, help us, Lord, to change courses in our lives. God, if, if we're not going the way you ought to, that you want us to go, help us to go the way you want us to. And then, Lord, save the sinner that's near his tail. In Jesus' name, help our churches, help our pastors, bless every one of them, God, as they meet on the Lord's day. Lord, give us revival. God, give us a moving of you. And I pray the persecution won't be too hard that's coming on the churches if we don't get right. Lord, help us to have revival in this nation. Help us, God, to get back to doing what's right if we just get back to doing what we know to do. Help us, everybody. Lord, not just the preacher, but the man, woman, boy, and girl. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray. God, bless this country. Help, Lord, help our leaders today. God, we're living in a dangerous day. We're living in a troubled hour. Lord, bless, and God, help us. And, Lord, sometimes we feel guilty about saying bless, but, Lord, help us to turn to you. Be with our military. Be with each and every one that serves in our military. Be with them, God. Be with our, our president, our vice president, our leaders. God, be with these people. Help them. Oh, God, today. But, Lord, give us a touch. Give us Christians a touch of the power of the Holy Ghost. And, Lord, may you sweep through our nation and convict sin, a sinners, Lord, of sin. And may you convict sinners, and may they come and be saved, Lord. And I believe if that happens, there'll have to be some church members get saved. There'll have to be some deacons get saved. There'll have to be some preachers get saved. I believe that. But Lord, help us, Lord. We need, we need a shaking from heaven today. In Jesus' name, amen.